Ken Kelly with the uh, Farm and Agribusiness Management Team with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Uh, I want to talk a little bit today about farm operational continuity. Uh, how are we going to keep the farm going? What are we going to do in those times of disaster? Uh, how are we going to address those issues? Uh, as we go through this, we'll talk about several different things. And of course, it'll be pretty broad and pretty general because everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different. If you have questions afterwards, after the video, and, and you don't uh, quite have all your questions answered by, by, by the um, presentation, feel free to email me at kellewi at auburn.edu or call or text me on my cell phone at 251-238-0373. So when we talk about continuity, farm continuity, a lot of times, normally when we talk about that, we're talking about succession planning, okay, and estate planning, and, and how does the farm going to continue from generation to generation? Uh, and that is definitely continuity and, and, and part of the discussion we need to have. Uh, and, it, and it's extremely important, but it doesn't address some issues like who knows how to do certain critical tasks, uh, who knows when and how to fertilize, who knows all the computer passwords, knows uh, what bills have to be paid and where you go to pay those, and, and just general things that have to be done for the farm to continue in times of emergency. And that's kind of what we're talking about today is operational continuity, not necessarily succession planning, but operational day to day when, when disasters happen. So do you really need an operational continuity plan? Well, yeah, I would say so. And I'll kind of start with the obvious. Okay. Uh, anybody heard about COVID-19 that, that that's going on? Uh, it's completely turned the world upside down. Hit every segment of our economy and every segment of our population has been hit by COVID-19. So we know stuff like that's out there. Now I'll grant you, uh, it's it's a hundred year pandemic and, and we don't see those very often, but they do come along and we need to be prepared for them. Then there are things that are a little more individualized, like avian influenza. Uh, we saw that hit a couple of our poultry producers uh, over the last few years and certainly could have a large impact on the, so, on the uh, poultry industry. So those guys have to be ready for all that. And it can affect other things too, like your hunting and, and, and your, um, your agri-tourism uh, type stuff cause, because of the, uh, the bird interaction that goes on there. So those things it play into, into our planning. Certainly natural disasters. Uh, most of us remember Katrina. We remember Michael. Certainly uh, were those disasters like that hit. Uh, they are extremely devastating. They hit all of our guys. And if you don't have some kind of continuity plan, how do you adjust to that? How do you make things work? How do you continue to cash flow during those situations? We also think about per certain political and social events. 9-11 uh, certainly upset a lot of different things, uh, really for several years, put us down a certain path of, uh, uh, of on, the, on our economy and how things are going with that. Uh, this last year or so, we've seen riots, we've seen unrest, and we've seen them before, and we will see them again. While not everything pertains to everybody, uh, certainly if you're in the places where these things are uh, part of what's going on around you, you have to be, be ready for those, and you have to have some kind of uh, continuity plan in place to address those. Uh, certainly, there, there weren't riots and unrest everywhere, but if you were in Seattle uh, and CHOP, then, then absolutely in that district, uh, you need a continuity plan to, for your business to continue working. Uh, certainly hurricanes don't hit everybody, but where they do hit, we have to be aware of them. Um, then other things like just the economics. What are prices doing? Uh, production economics, prices go up and down. Inventories go up and down. The cost of production a lot of times goes up while the prices go down. So how do you, uh, how do you uh, address those issues? What is your plan for making it through that? So those are all kind of obvious. The things that, that sometimes we don't tend to think about, uh, we'll call them the less obvious, but just as severe and just as uh, just as important, uh, death. We, we, we often have certain folks that are critical in our operation that, that know everything about the operation. They know everything that's going on. They know all the passwords. They know when to do this and when to do that. But if we lose someone like that, do we have a, do we have a plan in place to address that? Divorce. Divorce, none of us want to think about that. Certainly, we've seen that in, in, in all segments of our society. Uh, probably um, uh, farming is, is no exception to that rule. So we have to be prepared for that. 
regulatory issues. What happens when you've based your whole crop on a certain science or a certain chemistry being out there and then those chemistry changes? Or you're basing your uh, industry on irrigation and all of a sudden the water's not available. What is our continuity plan? How do we address that? Uh, I weather, I know I mentioned natural disaster, but sometimes just weather in general, uh, uh, droughts and rain and floods and all aren't necessarily natural disasters. They're just weather. They're going to happen. We have to be prepared to address them. Uh, one down there at the bottom, employee liability, I think is something that a lot of times we don't take into account. Uh, that really goes into business planning. You have to business plan, have to have a business entity set up to protect yourself from that. But there's always a liability involved when you've got people working for you, uh, but where you're, where you're liable for their actions. So all of these things come into play. Sometimes we don't think about them near as much as we do the others, but we have to be prepared to address those as need be. So an operational continuity plan, kind of what are we talking about? It's got to be part of your business plan, okay? You should have a business plan uh, as, as part of, of the setup of your operation. It doesn't have to be complicated, okay? Uh, a lot of times we, when people want to have a business plan template, well, business plans are not complicated. They just tell you uh, kind of where you're at and where you're trying to get going and how you think you're going to get there, okay? Uh, and this operational company plan is a part of it. Uh, I'm going to mention this here, and I'll mention it again later. You've got to have an exit plan as a component of your business plan and your operational continuity plan. There has to be a plan in place for that time when you suddenly look around and say, I can't continue to do this. We have to, we have to liquidate. We have to get out of this. How are we going to do that? So back to our business plans. I said our continuity plan needs to be as part of our business plan. Uh, a couple of things on business plans in general. First of all, they should be written down. Uh, anytime you write something down, uh, it makes you think about it more. It makes the ideas more concrete. Uh, you, they're not as abstract. When you write things down, it also helps you kind of put in perspective some of the things uh, that, that, that you might want to look at as far as strengths and weaknesses of your company. Write them down, look at them. How are you going to address those things? Business plans have to be realistic. It does no good to write a fairy tale business plan that there's no way you can make it work, okay? Uh, there, there are there are industries. There are um, certain certain segments of industries that it's not realistic for some of us to be in. Uh, we we should match our strengths to our business opportunities, and we should be realistic. We should also be as thorough as possible. Uh, we have a real tendency to do outlines and 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 and, and form uh, ideas based on some real basic, uh, things. And that's great. That's how we start. But as we go through and develop our business plans and our continuity plans, we should be as thorough as possible. So what do we look at when we're doing a continuity plan? Okay. It's not an overly complicated thing. Uh, there's, there's usually not much of a template you would be working from on this. You would, have, 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 what you would try to do is, is list or state all of the problems that you think might could possibly happen, even though they might be a little bit out there, a little bit abstract, try to list them all and come up with a solution for those problems. None of us predicted COVID-19. None of us predicted Hurricane Michael being what it was. We have to have a plan in place. Uh, some of those are more abstract than others, but we have to come up and list all the problems that we think could possibly happen and have a solution in place for them. So uh, start by start by stating the issue or the events that you can throw that could throw your business plan off track. What could throw your cash flow off track? What could make you not able to pay your bills? Uh, what could shut your business down? Think about these and how you're going to address each and every one of those. Uh, sickness, we've mentioned these before. Death, uh, employees come and go, and interest rates going up and down. If you're based off operating loans and floating type loans and all of a sudden interest rates go up, can you cash flow? Uh, how, how, how much is your business uh, based on prices that you're going to receive? Uh, and what can you do if those prices suddenly just fall out, of, fall out of the sky? If we have trade issues, if we have uh, embargoes, if we have uh, disease, if we have whatever, uh, and prices fluctuate, how do you address those? And of course, we throw divorce in there again because that's just a fact of life that we see with so many business and business owners and business entities that affects that business. So 
you come up with an issue and then you try or a problem, a potential problem, and you try to address how you would how you would attack that issue on each and every one of them. So if we say sickness, we're worried about sickness in our business. Uh, certainly, we didn't predict COVID nineteen. Hard to predict that, but say uh, flu, influenza. It it can be just as devastating as as COVID nineteen at times. So you have sickness in your in your um in your business, and somebody's sick. How are you going to address that? Um, how about one example would be management responsibilities if i'm sick we'll go to my wife and my son will do the manual labor that's a small small farm situation there but that's that's possibly reasonable if you're sick but they're not uh we could we could certainly delegate in that way that's a possible uh example uh what about employees what about um if employees get sick or employees leave they get better job offers you have to fire an employee right in the middle of harvest season what do you do then uh, maybe you say, I will develop a comprehensive training plan where all my employees are trained in multiple disciplines where different folks can do everything. Uh, we don't, we're not just dependent on one person being there. And if something happens to them, the whole situation shuts down. Maybe on prices, you want to try to come up with a continuity plan to address prices, how you will handle prices if they go down. And, and certainly if prices go up, we like that. But if they go down, what in the world do we do? Maybe you say, well, I'm going to purchase whole farm revenue um, protection insurance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get something out there to protect, to protect my pricing and my uh, production. So there's options that are out there. And again, each and every farm's gonna be, gonna be different. Think about this, let's, let's, let's throw a scenario out there. If you were an Alabama cattle producer uh, in 2019 coming into 2020, okay? Uh, what we saw were prices were already pretty low. Uh, that's certainly lower than what, what cattle producers would have liked them to be in. Uh, we had an inventory that was, that was really large, which we knew was going to pressure prices. We had the hopes that trade was going to help us out some on our prices, but we knew a lot of proteins were going to be out there and competitive proteins. We already had pretty low prices, and, and we were kind of anticipating that, but we were also hopeful for higher prices. Well, that didn't happen. COVID-19 comes in and drives prices even lower. I mean, uh, pretty dead gum low in, in, in certain situations. Uh, they, they, they temporarily shut down some localized auctions. So if we wanted to sell cattle at, at, uh, when, this, when the shutdown first happened, if we wanted to sell cattle, we couldn't even sell cattle. It, they were ours until, well, until these things opened back up. Now, they did open back up, and it was temporary, but uh, they temporarily shut down some, process, some of the processing sector, which had a, had a domino effect back through the feeding industry, back to – cow calf operators in Alabama were the backups there and it could take a long time to work through that. Some essential workers have to miss time. Say if you needed to load animals, truck drivers have to be able to drive trucks. Um, some of these guys got sick, will get sick, have gotten sick. How do you address that? Uh, maybe COVID limited some supplies that, that were essential. Maybe you didn't have all the feed and minerals and, and health supplies you needed and certainly they got there but, but it took a little time and they were limited, you know. So when you look at those, and those are the types of things you want to look at when you're talking about your continuity plan. Those are some problems that we saw and maybe potential problems. Again, how would we address some of those? So if we went right now, say we didn't have a continuity plan, but we say we want to work on a continuity plan right now. We've seen that we need one after this COVID deal that we went through. So what are some options for that cattle producer in, the, in, the, in that situation or any situation as he tries to plan? Maybe they say, going forward, we're going to lower our stocking rate so that our cattle can be kept longer than planned on, on our farm without significant feed costs. Uh, we know that in the short term, that may be painful. That's going to make us kind of adjust our business plan. Our stocking rate's going to go down. But we're, we're, going, to be, we're going to be more sustainable that way when something like this happens again. Same way with a drought or floods or anything like that that affects our forage that's out there or maybe even affects our ability to market animals at a good price. Hey, we may need to hold these cattle a little bit longer. If we lower that stocking rate, uh, maybe they can be kept longer than we planned on farm. Uh, how about implementing some uh, rotational grazing strategies? Same type deal. We're going to better use, utilize our forage resources. We're going to work this into our plan. Uh, it's going to help long term. Part of our continuity, continuity is going to depend on us having more uh, forage supply than we need on normal years. 
Uh, maybe we, we could look to start forward contracting or hedging cattle prices. Was there a chance for us to forward contract or hedge prices early in 2020? Yeah, we could have looked at some future, some options, maybe, um, you know, some different different things going on there. Uh, a little early for forward contracting, but if we could do that, uh, certainly as we look at doing these kind of things, it protects us long term when, when we could do that. Maybe we propagate relationships to multiple marketing options. At, in this particular year of COVID-19 in 2020, we saw certain stockyards close. Some did, some didn't. What do you do if, if the only option you've got is your local stockyard? Well, there are other options that are out there. Local stockyards are a great option. Um, those guys are, are needed and we appreciate them, but maybe you propagate some relationships to multiple marketing options. It never hurts you to know multiple uh, places you can go with your goods and maybe even get some prices from those guys periodically. Train multiple employees to handle, move, and manage cattle. If we have people that are sick, if we have people that leave us for whatever reason, we're going to have multiple people that know how to do things. Um, we don't we don't need just one person that does all of the shots. One person does all of the uh, the worm, or all one person does all of whatever health practice uh, or handling practice. Everybody learns to handle different aspects. So if we lose one, two, uh, if we lose some of our help, we can move forward uh, in that situation. That's what a continuity plan is about. We're planning ahead. We've got things in place. Uh, we we know things that are that are going to going to happen. Uh, in case of those emergencies, uh, we we, we kind of plan ahead on that. So some some considerations for your contingency plans or your continuity plans. Uh, maintain maintain some savings. That is an excellent plan for any of us uh, in a form that can be easily turned into cash and it carries a low risk of loss. We never know when some of these events are going to happen. We have to plan in advance for them. Maybe prepay some debt in years when cash income is above average. Now, I realize the tax implications for doing this. I realize the kick in the can down the road theory. Got all that. Very seldom do we have multiple years where we make a large amount of cash income above average uh, in any of our ag segments. So consider prepaying some debt in, in, in the coming years when that happens. Uh, uh, spread, spread that uh, liability out a little bit there. Uh, maybe we could carry some uh, adequate insurance. Uh, but that, that, that would help us cover some crop losses or, or casualties or, or some of the medical problems or even some of those civil liabilities we talked about earlier. Carrying adequate insurance is a part of any continuity plan. All of these can be a part of a continuity plan. Sell off less productive assets to raise cash. The more cash we have, the, the better we can withstand market interruptions, things that are happening things that, that could cost us money down the road. Uh, and when we, when we sell off our less productive, when we become more efficient in our production uh, and put cash in our, in our in account, that helps us in case of, uh, of disaster. That helps us be able to move forward through this, through this uh, continuity plan. And, and finally, as we kind of end out, we would just say the, the part we never want to talk about is the exit plan. Uh, most business plans for farmers don't have an exit plan. We, we don't want to think we love doing what we do. We don't want to think about getting out of it. We'll just work a little bit harder. We'll work a little bit longer. We'll invest a little more of our time and our money into the, into the business, and we will make it work. Uh, that can't always happen. There is a need for all business and continuity plans to have an exit component to it. They need to be realistic. It's a realistic approach to retaining as much equity as possible. There has to be a point where when it gets to this point, we consider liquidating and we may consider getting back in at some point, but there comes a point where we got to get out of the business. We need to have a plan in place for that. Everybody's will be a little bit different, how we're going to do stuff, how we're going to liquidate, where we're going to move assets to, that kind of thing. Uh, certainly a plan in place as far as handling the tax liability of doing that is important. Uh, but just having a plan in general is, is what we're, we're talking about here. Just remember, a, a hole can, can become too deep to dig out of. No matter how hard you work at it or how bad you want it, the more you dig, the deeper you get, and you won't get out of the hole. At that point, you have to stop digging and figure a way to get out of the hole and not dig the hole any deeper. So 
Uh, again, none of us want to think about this component. It's extremely important, though. Have an exit plan as part of your continuity plan. So that's the end of our presentation. Uh, you, you know, there's no exact science to a continuity plan. There's no exact templates you have to work through here. The important part is that you do work through it, that you do sit down and you do think about all the issues and all the problems that you could potentially have and come up with realistic, real world situations. Um, we thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today. Again, if you'd like to talk to me more about this or about any farm and agribusiness topic, livestock economics, anything along those lines, please feel free to do that. You can reach me again at kellewi at auburn.edu or 251-238-0373. Thank you very much.